us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, 
Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and become as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. First thing in the morning the chief priests together with the elders and scribes in short the whole Sanhedrin had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered. It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with a man you call King of the Jews? They shouted back. Pilate asked them. Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder.
So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him. And they began saluting him. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to be crucified. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the sixth hour came, 
there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So we begin our solemn celebration of Holy Week. And as we begin it, it's important to remember that this is not theatre, although it will certainly involve drama, nor are we commemorating symbolic events, though we'll certainly use symbols. The passion and death of Jesus are actual and historical events documented by at least four different writers who recorded the events in different ways, but with the same core of essential happenings. The very fact that the words Jesus spoke from the cross using his own language, Aramaic, and have been passed down through the generations gives us the stamp of authenticity, if you like. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, today's celebration brings to each of us the reality of Jesus' sufferings on the cross. He suffered physically in his body. Recall the way he was treated during his detention and during his trial. Slapped, beaten, flogged, crowned with thorns. And then the cruelty of the crucifixion itself. Then there are his emotional sufferings. Judas' betrayal, Peter's denial, condemnation by the civil and religious authorities, the mockery of the guards, the jeering at the foot of the cross, the rejection of the crowd, utter failure, and the flight of the disciples. However, despite this, Jesus always knew and experienced the presence and the love of his Father. But his cry from the cross indicates that the unthinkable has happened. Jesus now experiences complete abandonment, absolute forsakenness. Here we witness the spiritual suffering of Jesus crying out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All has apparently ended, ended in failure. Nothing is left but the empty void of confusion, incomprehension, darkness. Jesus is crying out, why? Why, Father? Why me? Why this? A why that embraces every other why that has ever been spoken from the beginning of time until now. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This cry encompasses all the forsakenness of history, all the moments of extreme pain, love that fails, is rejected or betrayed, children who are rejected, abused and aborted, the plight of all widows and orphans, broken marriages, social exclusion, injustice and oppression, the loneliness of the sick and the dying. Jesus brings all this abandonment to the cross when he, the Son of God, experiences abandonment distance from God. And why did he do all this? Why? For no other reason than for us. His forsakenness, his abandonment was for me and for you. He wanted to be part of all those moments, occasions, when we have cried out in our abandonment and forsakenness. He wanted to be one with all the whys that have ever been shouted out throughout the ages. He wanted to be with us to the very end. 
He shows that despite this chasm and feeling of abandonment, despair is not the answer. He trusted. He held on to the belief in his father. He persevered in love. Into your hands I commend my spirit, Jesus proclaims from the cross in St. Luke's Gospel. He prays for forgiveness for his disciples and those who crucify him. The abyss of our many evils is immersed in a greater love and thus our isolation becomes fellowship and communion. This is precisely how God works. Christ in his abandonment moves us to seek him and to love him and all those who themselves are abandoned, those who are exploited, the poor who live on the streets, the migrants, unborn children, the elderly who live alone, the sick, the young with interior emptiness who cry out with no one to listen to their pain and see no other, forward, no other way forward but suicide. Pope Francis describes them as the abandoned of our day, the Christs of our day. Let's remember that the rejected and excluded are living icons of Christ, the reminders of his reckless love, his forsakenness that delivers us from every form of loneliness and isolation. God has not left us alone. Let us care then for those who feel alone and abandoned. Then and only then will we be of one heart and mind with the one who for our sake emptied himself, who emptied himself completely for us. We stand now to profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus enters victoriously into Jerusalem to do his Father's will, we turn to the Father united with our crucified Saviour. That the suffering and death of Jesus will inspire the leaders of the Church in their witness to the love of God and give new life to the Church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who are to be baptised and received into the church at the Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace. Lord, 
in your mercy. Yeah. That civil authorities will use their power to protect the poor, opposed injustice, preserve religious freedom, and promote lasting peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That Christians everywhere will live this Holy Week with special reverence, self-giving, and devotion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick and housebound, for those caring for them, and for those who have died that they may all feel the comfort and compassion of our loving Saviour. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask Mary, Mother of the Crucified Christ, and our Mother, to intercede for us. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray, Pray for, for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, by the Holy Cross of Christ, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and be united to Jesus in his passion with Mary, his mother, to, for Jesus is Lord now and forever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, I accept the sacrifice of your hands. For Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith in your death Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May it make it was an eternal offering to you that we will obtain the inheritance of all your innate, the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph of spouse, with your blessed apostles and with the glorious martyr, and with all the saints, with the constant intercession, we rely on your presence for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
into healing them. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am
let us pray. <coughs> Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by the resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God the Father of mercies, who has given you an example of love in the passion of his only begotten Son, grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessing, Amen. so that you may receive the reward of everlasting life from him, through whose earthly death you believe that you have escaped eternal death. Amen. And may the following, and may by following the example of his self-abasement, may you possess a share in his resurrection. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.